I'd like to acknowledge um, the original team at the JI that started this uh, 10, years, 10 years ago, and I'm so thrilled that they're here tonight. Sergeant Linda Stewart from the Justice Institute is here tonight, and this is the woman that started it all along with Jack McGee. And Jack is one of our founding board members at Pacific Autism Family Network, and these two individuals have donated hundreds of hours of their time, I think almost thousands, and um, of their expertise, so we're incredibly grateful. Um, you know, Sergio and I are the biggest fans of the Justice Institute. We have been for a long time for many reasons. But one of the biggest, biggest reasons is that they understand that autism is very important to first responders in understanding its relevancy and its seriousness. And I can tell you, as a parent of a young man with autism, is there are many families that fear that their child's autism behavior will be misunderstood in the community. And I was trying to think of a personal story, and there's many to tell, but the one I'm going to tell is I was in the hairdresser three hours ago, and so I thought, that's pretty relevant, and I know you thought I all woke up like this, <laughs> but there's a young lady sitting next to me, and I happen to know her, and she's a wonderful young mom, and she's been volunteering with Special Olympics for the last 10 years. And she was telling me this story about how a young man was having a, a meltdown. He was about 16 years old, 6'4", 240 pounds, which isn't un uncommon for y youngsters with autism and young men with autism. And um, there was, uh, and he was having a physical problem and taking it with his aid. And there was a young man that came out to help, and he was a new assistant coach with Special Olympics. And the reason that he jumped in is he said that he recently had some autism training. Do you know that he's a Richmond firefighter? And that's how far this training has gone as a result of the Justice Institute. It's amazing. Over the past two years, the Justice Institute has really helped Pacific Autism, and we're so proud to announce a first. So with the Justice Institute's support, all of the first responders really took note. And now the training is across British Columbia, and this is a first in North America, if not the world, and all across the first responder groups of police, fire, ambulance, e-com, call dispatchers, and many of our partners are here in the room tonight. And, you know, we really should be giving you folks the award tonight and the Justice Institute the award tonight because I can tell you as a mom and as many of our Pacific Autism families have told us hundreds over the past few years at the center is that we're still fearful of our kiddos' behavior being misunderstood in the public and in the community. So thank you so much to our first responders, partners to the Justice Institute, and I can tell you all that we'll sleep a little bit better tonight for what you guys are doing. You can talk What's that? You can talk I, I can talk now, but I have to go second, so I always have to pay attention to what she said so I don't repeat it. So my apologies. Firstly, to uh, Michelle, Bernie, and the board of the foundation, thank you very, very much for this wonderful honor. Um, I, I don't know if you noticed on your table, there's some first responder gear in the middle of each. I will, put, I will read absolutely nothing into the fact that I'm at a table with a defibrillator. <laughs> Uh, but w really are excited to be here and wanted to acknowledge the, our fellow honorees, uh, our, our friend who I'm, whom I very much admire, Marvin Storrow. Uh, congratulations, very, very worthy uh, recipient. And uh, the fact we get to honor Heather Lyle and Douglas Eastwood this, this evening and their families were honored to share this stage. Also wanted to make mention of the mental health initiative uh, for first responders. Uh, mental health is a comorbidity for many, many people in the autism uh, uh, world and obviously the, uh, the way that many of them present, it's the same kind of challenges and so we're very excited to see that kind of training going on. We're very proud of the work that Wendy, Jack and, uh, and Linda and all the people at JIBC have done around our train the trainer model. We think it's incredibly important. Um, I wanted to just wrap up then by mentioning one story is uh, I on, on Friday went over to visit my mom and dad and my dad's this cute little Italian guy Pasquale with the curly black hair and he was very very excited he said it was a special day he wanted to have a party he was gonna have a glass of wine and a piece of cake because it was his the 60th anniversary of the day he came to Canada and it reminded me tonight because yeah, thank you. <laughs> You know, it's funny because he left southern Italy, the most beautiful place in the world, and moved to Trail, B.C., which is 
it's a nice place, but you know, <laughs> the coast of Amalfi. I'm, anyway, uh, what, what the reason it, uh, it dawns on me is because what, what it's really about being a Canadian is this meaningful inclusion that we create for all Canadians. The understanding of the unique challenges that people in our communities face, like those faced by those in the autism communities. And it's organizations like JIBC and the commitment that they have made, which is incredibly important. I almost made a mistake in not mentioning, I also wanted to acknowledge we were uh, nominated for this award by uh, Life Labs, an amazing organization who came on board as sponsors of our, uh, uh, our endeavor many, many years ago and have done an amazing job of spreading their message of, of uh, a service to people in our community across this country. But in wrapping up, like I say, organizations like Life Labs and JIBC who are so committed to creating a tolerant, just, and inclusive society, thank you so very, very much for this honor.